Monday Night Raw, more like Monday Night GTA. Welcome back, guys, to Fog Wrestling for your Monday Night Raw review. It was the second Raw of the year. And was it as good as the first Raw? Probably not. I thought going into the show, the lack of a preview concerned me straight away. I spoke about in the preview how WWE basically had nothing advertised other than the fact that Alexa Bliss and Austin Theory were going to cut promos. So that got me thinking, well, you know what? This show is probably not going to be that good. However, it, I mean, it was it was all right. It wasn't the worst show I've ever seen. That's about as kind as I can be. There were some things on the show that I liked. But overall, for three hours, you expect to get more than a couple of things that you like. But I want, before we get into what actually happened, a big problem I have with Raw is the breaks. And I know you can't really change that. I know they need to take commercial breaks. But I just feel like, taking so many commercial breaks with the current Raw, the, the way Raw has been for years now, it just doesn't work. Everything is so slow paced. How many breaks do you see throughout one match? It's like back in the day, WWE, it was like quick, you know, you'd quick match, quick segment, on to the next thing. I feel like if you had lots of breaks during that, they wouldn't feel as bad, but breaks now, when you've got about four breaks through one match, how can you care? Why would you care about a match when you, as soon as you try and pay attention to it, literally going straight into a break, you come back, couple of moves, break, come back again, couple of moves, break, come back again, couple of moves, finish or match over. You know, it's like garbage, man. Back in the day, like when wrestling was quick paced, when every segment or, or promo or match didn't really last that long unless you were Evolution and you took up like the first half an hour of Raw, but apart from that, it's like they, they moved quickly from match to promo to segment to vignette to match to promo. Everything moved quickly and I feel like you could implement breaks better than you can nowadays. But anyway, I can't really, I'm not going to criticise the show, I'm not going to give the show a low rating based on breaks, but breaks are annoying when you're watching this and every time you're getting you know interested or semi-interested if that's what you do when watching wrestling if, if not then great but anytime you, you try and care about something you get breaks but i won't mention the breaks anymore however i wish there was a break when baron corbin came out so ko came out first of all he went to cut a promo there was a ko chant uh, jbl came out jbl says that the crowd uh, the crowd are like delusional, the crowd believe in anything, but even this crowd don't believe that Owens can defeat Roman Reigns for the WWE Undisputed Championship. But JBL says, a man, there's a man who can beat defeat Roman Reigns, the only guy that's beaten him in the last three years, the only guy with a pinfall victory, and that is Baron Corbin. So this sets up Corbin versus Kevin Owens. Uh, Kevin Owens defeats Baron Corbin. Like, literally, what is the point of this? Seriously, well, what is the point of Baron Corbin? Why did they waste JBL on Baron Corbin? It's going nowhere. Corbin's going nowhere. And you're literally just wasting JBL by sticking him with Corbin, in my opinion. So, uh, just split these two up, man. If, you're, if, if JBL's willing to be in wrestling, can we not have him in a better role? I don't know, a commentary role or a GM role? Or stick him as a manager of someone that can actually go on and have a future. Someone that's got going to have success. Baron Corbin, been there, done that, he's failed. Plus, like, what age is he now? It's not like he's a young up-and-comer. The guy's, like, in his late 30s. I mean, seriously, if you're going to push, if you're going to use JBL and you're going to use him to try and get someone over, use him on a, an up-and-coming guy, you know? Bring someone up for NXT and have JBL be his mentor, have JBL be the manager, have JBL handpick this guy from the development brand from NXT, then JBL can go, oh, this is the next guy, this is the guy that's going to win titles, this is the guy that's going to dethrone Roman Reigns, this is the next wrestling god. But not some guy that's been on the roster for like, you know, seven, eight years. And Corbin's a bum, man. We've already. He, he literally. The guy literally had a gimmick where he was a bum. If that doesn't sum it up, then, you know what? I don't, I don't know what will. So, yeah, Corbin. Who cares? Honestly, who cares? Um. Then we come back from the break. There's a tag match being announced, a tag team gauntlet match. The winners will challenge the Usos for the belts. Uh, man, not Mansoor. What's the other guy called? Mustafa Ali apparently is complaining because him and Dolph Ziggler were supposed to be in the match, but then Dolph Ziggler said he didn't want to be in the match because he wanted to face Solo Sokoa. 
So Mustafa Ali asks Sigler what his problem with him is, and Sigler just says, "Look, it's nothing personal. But I need to get revenge on Solo Sokoa and all what happening here." By the way, after the Owens beat Corbin, he got in a bit of a brawl with uh, the Usos and Solo Sokoa. The Usos got ejected from ringside, whereas uh, they got ejected from the arena. But but Pierce told Solo he's going to be competing tonight. Then we seen what happened last week with Alexa Bliss and Bianca Belair. Alexa Bliss comes out. Looking a bit more like the goddess Alexa Bliss tonight, not fully goddess, but you, she looked more goddess than she's probably looked in years. So she did kind of like cross over a little bit, but you can still see that she's not fully committed back to being, you know, the goddess gimmick. But she did have like a lot of makeup on and she, she just did look more like the old Alexa Bliss, but then she cut... Kind of the same, you know, evil, um, the, the evil is mine sort of promo here. So it's like, it, it's weird because at one minute she's looking, her appearance wise looks like she's trying to get away from this like dark evil character. But the promo was very dark and evil. So I don't understand it. And then we see Uncle Howdy come out. Uncle Howdy comes to the top of the ramp. We cut to a commercial break. We come back and it's over. It's done. It's finished. We don't get to see what happens. Nothing happened. What? This is unbelievable. I mean, let's look, let's look, use an analogy and an example. Could you imagine the live sex celebration with Edge and Lita? Edge is undressing Lita. Edge is about to take Lita's brow. If you're sitting at home, you've got the tissues ready. They go to a commercial break. You cannot wait. You think when the commercial break comes back, Edge is going to rip that bra off and Lita's big, massive boobs are just going to be on display. You come back through the break and the, the, the bed's gone. There's no live sex celebration the segment's over you would fucking be mortified man you'd be depressed but why did they do that here it makes no sense honestly it makes no sense why did they why did they bring out howdy and then you think that something's going to happen then they come back for the break and nothing happens they just forget about it you know it's cheap it's bloody cheap anyway i don't want to rant too much Bailey up next, Jesus Christ, talk about ranting, I'll be ranting a lot more. Right, I've got a problem with Bailey. so she's supposed to take on Maya Yim here. Alright, that's fair enough, Maya Yim is supposedly standing up and uh, standing up for uh, Becky Lynch or whatever. So Bailey says to Maya Yim, ding dong, hello, and in my opinion this is dumb. Bailey's just thrown out words and catchphrases that she's used years ago with a different character because it got semi over. It doesn't make any sense for her to use it now. It's so out of context. It just it, it, There's no point in using this, but since it's okay for Bailey, I'll do it too. And courtesy of Kurt Angle, hey Bailey, ding dong, hello, you suck. That's my opinion on Bailey. She can say ding dong, hello, but it was a stupid gimmick. It was a stupid catchphrase back then, and it sounds even more stupid when she's moved away from that character but she's still coming out with the same shit you know it's like you wouldn't get Undertaker as the American badass saying rest in peace and, and doing the eye roll you know that just wouldn't fucking happen but again Bailey, this is garbage man absolute garbage Bailey beats my am who cares man seriously who cares i didn't care I didn't care at all, and then that's it, really. So, yeah, Bailey wins. Uh, apparently, Johnny Gargano's out injured. Thank God. Thank the Lord. Uh, but we get Candice LeRae versus Rhea Ripley tonight, so who cares? Then we get Austin Fury and Seth Rollins. Fury cuts a promo. I didn't think it was very good. Rollins came... I'm not saying it was bad or awful, but I've seen a lot of people on Twitter saying, oh, this was great. I didn't think it was that good. Fury accused Rollins of acting injured and then said that Rollins is great, but he's surpassed them. Then Rollins says that his leg's not ready right now, but it will be ready for, let's say, the Royal Rumble. Rollins says he's going to win the Royal Rumble. Then Bobby Lashley returns for the first time in a month and spears Austin Fury. And Bobby Lashley, I guess... I guess he's just declaring himself in the Royal Rumble. Does Bobby Lashley need to qualify or is he too big a star? Can he just say, I'm entering the Royal Rumble? Who knows? I mean, it was nice to see Lashley back, but I didn't think the segment was that great. Then we get Rhea Ripley versus Candice LeRae. Squash match. Rhea Ripley wins. I mean, what were you expecting? You know, obviously this was going to happen. Then, um, MVP... 
is in the backstage locker room with Bobby Lashley. MVP says that he was the one that got Bobby Lashley back. Bobby Lashley kind of thanks MVP. MVP offers his hand, but uh, Lashley's wary. MVP says he made a mistake when he chose uh, almost over Lashley. I think that almost experiment has failed. And you know what? It was dumb. Uh, MVP worked well with Lashley. I, I don't know if they should reunite the the heart business because I, I just think having Lashley with Cedric Alexander and Shelton Benjamin, I think that would drag Lashley down. But I certainly would put Lashley back with MVP. I mean, Lashley's a machine. He's a beast. He's a monster. But he's not a good talker. You know, he's probably one of the worst talkers. So I think getting him back with MVP. Probably the best thing you can do for Bobby Lashley, but Lashley says he isn't really interested in rejoining. MVP says that his phone number is still the same if he changes his mind. Uh, they've got another Cody Rhodes vignette. I mean, I'm looking forward to seeing Cody Rhodes back. I think at this stage, it's pretty much he, he is going to be back at the, the Royal Rumble. We'll see. We'll see. Then we get Soul Sakura versus Dolph Ziggler. I mean, Dolph Ziggler has just lost every big match that he's been a part of in the last 10 years. So what made anybody think that he was, you know, not going to lose this one? Solo Sequoia with the win. Simone Spike paying homage to... Um, so, I mean, it was all right. <laughs> Boring match. Who cares? Um, then we get Maya Yim backstage. She gets attacked again by Bailey and uh, Damage Control. Bailey says the difference between Becky Lynch and her is... Becky Lynch is like too proud to ask for help, whereas Bailey will accept any help to beat someone up. So they attack Maya Yim. Uh, not great. Then Miz TV is up next. It's the Judgment Day come out, and I mean this is funny. Like when Dominic Mysterio first came into wrestling, I don't mean back in 2005. I mean when he came in with Ray. I thought he was awful. I don't necessarily mean in the ring. I just I thought his character, lack of character, he was basically just Ray's son and a guy that tried to copy Ray's moves. But Dominic Mysterio in the past, I think past few months when he's joined up with the Judgment Day and he's turned heel and he's went against his father, it's been great. And then him getting arrested, him, you know, supposedly spending time in jail and just looking like a gangster now, his whole persona now, I think it's really, really good. So... The Judgment Day come out, and Dominic comes out dressed like a member of the Ballers, man. I thought I was watching GTA San Andreas here. I was half expecting CJ and Big Smoke to come out and pop his ass, man. He legit looked like a member of the Ballers from uh, from GTA San Andreas. If you've never played it, one of the best video games of all time. Uh, they kind of dressed in purple, and that's what it would remind you of when you've got, uh, you've got Dominic coming out with like the purple do-rag and the bandana, man. It, it does give you those vibes, and you know but GTA San Andreas is a great game. So if wrestling, if anything's reminding you of San Andreas, then it must be good because that game was fucking great. So yeah, they come out, they, they cut the promo. Dominic talks about how he had to do hard time and how it changes you and all this stuff. And he said that he had to beat people up inside and he, he says that snitches get stitches and <laughs> basically telling the Miz, how he, what he had to do in order to survive and in the middle like I heard from sources that you spent like two hours inside a county a county um, cell you know so he well, we know that he didn't even go to prison but obviously being the heel that they're trying to make out as if he did hard time he didn't do nothing man he, you know he got locked up in a cell for five minutes um, the Miz is always kind of calling out uh, the bullshit Damien Priest and Finn Balor look like they're about to beat up the Miz and then we get uh, we get the OC coming out, and this is the start of the main event. A number one contenders tag team turmoil match, and it's like, come on, seriously? An hour-long tag team match? Are you for real? It's the OC, the Judgment Day, Shelton Benjamin and Cedric, Alpha Academy and the Street Profits. Like, I'm not going to review this whole thing. I mean, I did. I had the displeasure of watching it, but I'm not going to go through move by move. It was an hour-long match. Like, I don't think these hour-long gauntlet matches, I don't think things like this work. But for it to work, what I think you need is, I think you need people that are actually over, people that we actually care about. I think you need stars in the match. And you just didn't get this here. You know, it's a bunch of tag teams, tag team wrestling bloody dead it is and none of these tag teams are that great it was just boring and it's like you, 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 they spend like a, a full hour just concentrating on the ring you know there's no there's no like interruption there's no like cutting away from the ring if it's going to be an hour long gauntlet match can't you like at least do something where like maybe a team's making their entrance 
they're coming down the ramp and then you cut and you show something backstage for 30 seconds, you know, just to like break it up. The fact that when this gauntlet match starts, apart from the commercial breaks, which was annoying, you were basically focused on this entire match for an hour. You get nothing else, nothing backstage, nothing, you know, in parking lot, in the dressing room, you, you get nothing. It's literally just tag team wrestling for a full hour. And it's way too much. In the end, it comes down to the Judgment Day and the Street Profits. It looked like the Street Profits were going to win. But honestly, we don't need to see the Street Profits versus the Usos again. That would be overkill. So thankfully, the the OC, not the OC, the Judgment Day win. Uh, Dominic lies, cheats and steals to get the pinfall on Montez Ford. Then they celebrate and they get confronted by the Usos who come out with the belts, raise their belts up and, and Raw ends with the Judgment Day and the Usos staring each other out. So that's it guys. Look, I like the Dominic stuff. I think Dominic Mysterio's good. I like him. I, I'm enjoying his character. I mean, the Alexa Bliss promo, it wasn't the worst thing ever. I just... I'm kind of annoyed. I just kind of wish she would go back to her old self. Um, she was looking pretty hot, though. Uh, what else did I like tonight? Yeah, not a lot, to be honest, actually. I think that's kind of it. Yeah, no, I think, I mean, yeah, you know what, I'm going to give Raw a 2 out of 10. I mean, it wasn't great, but Dominic Mysterio, the Judgment Day, looking like members of the Ballers, you know, Judge, uh, Dominic Mysterio was kind of looking like a, a slim version of Conan, you know, he, he is looking like a gangster, man, there's no doubt about it. So, uh, the transformation in Dominic's been great. This Raw, though, wasn't great. I'm giving it a 2 out of 10. Let me know what you think down below, guys. I'll catch you in the next one. And, of course, until then, being Fog Wrestling, a lot more feds to come today as well, so check out for the make sure you're subscribed. I'll see you later. Till next time though. Peace.